Hold on to your butts, Jurassic World is finally in theaters. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I'm Dano, and I just got done watching Jurassic World, the fourth movie in the Jurassic Park series. Now, some of you already know that since I saw the first film back in 1993, I've become a huge Jurassic Park nerd and this new movie is only adding fuel to that fire. In fact, Jurassic Park is most likely the cause of my current infatuation with theme parks that I just can't seem to outgrow. Now, while the last two Jurassic Park films took place on Isla Sorna, Site B, this one takes place on Isla Nublar, the home of John Hammond's original theme park. Now, this movie got started by dropping a big old load of nostalgia right in my pants. You will remember to wash your hands before you eat anything. Now, the fact that the first time we really get to see the park, they use the old wooden Jurassic Park gates, and there's the theme music playing, and there's a monorail, it just really warmed this old nerd's heart. So much so that it might have, you know, steamed my 3D glasses up just a little bit. I didn't cry. It was steam. Now this movie does a really great job of honoring the very first film. Keep your eyes out for a bunch of locations and little things from the first movie. Even Mr. DNA makes an appearance. It was also nice to see the familiar face of B.D. Wong, who plays Dr. Henry Wu, the chief geneticist who's responsible for pretty much all the dinosaurs on the island. Now in this movie, I noticed a lot of tributes to the park's founder, John Hammond. Seemed like they took the idea of John Hammond and really split him up into two different characters. First up, Simon Mizrani, played by Irfan Khan, who was really the money man, and his dialogue was actually really reminiscent of John Hammond's, which made him a really likable part of the movie. And second is Bryce Dallas Howard's character, Claire, who's wearing an outfit that is pretty much as Hammond as you could get. Have a go. And, just like John Hammond, she's even watching over two kids. Now, the plot of the movie revolves around an updated park that's definitely grown up a whole lot over the last 20 plus years. I was actually really impressed with how the park looks now. It's all updated with the coolest technology. They got holograms and all kinds of neat stuff. Spared no expense. They had updated versions of a lot of the concept attractions for the original Jurassic Park. There were river kayaking trips with dinosaurs. There was a monorail, a SeaWorld style arena, fancy little gyro bubbles for people to ride around in. Now, I really loved how they mentioned that the park needed to keep updating and upping the ante in their entertainment and attractions because people were growing bored and needed bigger and better. And being a big Disneyland nerd, someone who follows the theme park industry news, seeing something like that really made Jurassic World feel like a real theme park to me. Having a dinosaur exhibit sponsored by Verizon actually really reminded me of Disneyland sponsored attractions like Indiana Jones when sponsored by AT&T or the goats when they were sponsored by Sparkle Paper Towels. Now, there were no dismembered goats this time around, but the movie was definitely violent. The new star of the film, the Indominus Rex, is like a hybrid dinosaur, basically designed to be the most extreme dinosaur ever. Kind of like if a T-Rex drank a whole case of Mountain Dew and went rollerblading in the X Games. Now, as ridiculous as something like that sounds, it's just as feasible as, say, training velociraptors for the military. Now, personally, I'd rather see Mr. Tony Rex over here in a half pipe doing, like, sick jumps and stuff. I'm, I'm cool. I know what cool is. Now, there was one really cool part where Dr. Henry Wu was talking about how they've always used other animals' DNA to splice with the dinosaurs to kind of fill in the gaps, and that that explained why some of the dinosaurs didn't look the way they were supposed to. Now, this was a genius move on the writer's part because it basically makes up for all the inconsistencies in the dinosaurs in the previous three movies. Well, now for the stuff I didn't like. The biggest problem for me with this movie was actually the CGI, and unfortunately, the movie was full of it. Okay, now the dinosaurs did look really good, and the dino eating dino action was really cool, but it just looked really, really fake sometimes. There was even a scene towards the beginning where Mizrani was landing a helicopter, and it looked like a plastic toy helicopter was kind of just comped in, and then they added the background in later. And that's very likely what happened. But this movie has a big enough budget to make helicopters not look fake. I mean, last I checked, helicopters weren't fake, right? You can actually film a helicopter landing. Now, CGI in a dinosaur movie is to be expected, but when it takes me out of the movie, they're not doing it right. Now, one of the things I really love about the first movie was how real those dinosaurs were. It was a mixture of CGI and puppets, and this one, there were a few moments where there were puppets, but it was mostly CGI. Seeing Chris Pratt go all Cesar Milan with a bunch of raptors was just completely unbelievable most of the time, and it was just hard to, hard to stay focused on the movie because of it. I also really don't like how they teased us with all that cool Jurassic Park merch, and then in real life offer us like nothing but mediocre toys. I mean, just shut up and take my money! 
Overall, though, I really did love the movie. There was a lot of cool action. There was a lot of nostalgia. They even managed to squeeze in some really cute moments. Three words. Dinosaur Petting Zoo. It felt really good to be back on the island and seeing some familiar things like old vehicles. Look at the numbers, because I'm pretty sure some of those were in the first movie, like the exact same ones were in the first movie. Now, I want to know from you guys, knowing that every time they put dinosaurs in a theme park, disaster strikes and a bunch of people die, would you still go to Jurassic World? I know I would. I hope you enjoyed my spoiler-free review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give a big thumbs up if you love dinosaurs. Who doesn't? Everybody does. I'll let you do that. Go do this little thumb. It's down there. It's the thumb. Not the one like this, but the one like, like this. Yeah, that one. Click. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you thought of my review. Let me know what you thought about the movie. Don't be afraid to hit that big red subscribe button down there, up there, wherever it is. Hit the big red button if you're new around here. I'd love to have you stick around. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is my first time to ever see I'm standing in Cinderella's shower. Stupid. Awesome. That's so cool. But it's neat like